Uh, I thought it would be a great chance. You know, some of us are, are working on the 90 day run. We've been um, learning a lot. We've been applying a lot. And um, as we've been learning and growing, we are applying a lot of things. And I wanted just to have a session tonight to talk about prospecting, to talk about, you know, how it sounds when you put it all together, um, making sure that we all have a, a really good sense um, as far as knowing what to do. And I have also a, a great guest and friend with me tonight. I was really impressed by something he put out today. And so I wanted him to share something that he's going to share a little bit later on as well. So when it comes to um, prospecting and inviting, let me just see if I can grab something here. I want to just um, grab a, okay, beautiful. Okay, let me just grab this and see if I can bring it up. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen just for a minute. So I want to, I want to bring up this slide and just remind us of a few things. So tonight's training is about putting it all together. So when you're talking to someone, how does it sound, right? How does it sound when you're talking to them? How does it sound when you're following up and you're closing? And so we're going to talk about that tonight. We'll be able to answer questions if anyone has questions. Um, uh, hopefully you're here on the Zoom. If you're not here on the Zoom, if you're watching on Facebook, what I would recommend is jump on the Zoom because I'm gonna be able to see questions. I'm gonna be able to respond to people um, with questions on the Zoom, but Facebook, I'll probably have to come back to you later and just answer the questions by text. So if you're watching live on Facebook, fantastic, but I will recommend just try and uh, join us on the Zoom call. The Zoom link should be on the poster and in the Facebook Live as well. So uh, when we're talking to people, okay, there's a, there's a wide variety of places we can find people. We have our, our hot market. These are our closest family, friends, and supporters. Um, and so those are people we can use various approaches with. We can either go to them and ask them for support, meaning, um, you know what, I, I really have, appreciate you in my life. You've always been there for me. And I am starting a new business this year. I'm really, really excited by it. I, I'm, I really want to achieve great things. Share a bit of your story if you've had it created. And then say, you know what, I'm not calling to recruit you. I'm not calling to ask you to join me in my business. But I really need your support. I just want you to be a customer. I just want you to be a customer. Try my products for a month and give me your feedback. That would mean the world to me. Okay, that is a great way that someone can start in the business, even if they don't have money. They can go to their, their closest family, friends, and supporters and ask for support. All right, give them a little bit of a script, give them the tools they would need to share the information, and people are being very successful with this approach. It's also a great way to kickstart your business because now you'll have customers and you'll have testimonies right away, and you'll also start to earn some income. So, Hot market support is a great way to talk to people, um, approach them. And then you can also go to your closest family, friends, and supporters and just ask them to help you practice, right? Listen, I'm, I'm starting something new. I'm excited. I'm a little bit nervous. I would just like you to attend this presentation so you can give me your feedback so that I know that if I invite people to come and listen, the feedback's going to be good. All right. Or I need I want to sit down with you and go through a few things one on one. Um, would you be willing to let me practice on you? OK, whatever it is you want to practice. That's another approach. Now, people that, you know, are called your warm market, your warm market or anyone that, you know, anyone that, you know, and knows you. OK, people you have in your phone, people you have on your social media, um, people that you you uh, meet. Um, anyone that you know. And so you can be very direct with your warm market. So a direct approach is um, someone that you know that you would always compliment. Of course, we always compliment. And then a, a direct market would be something like, you know what, I, I'm really going to do big things this year. I know it in my heart, I'm committed, I'm excited. 
And there is nobody I would rather be doing business with, nobody I would rather be partnered with than you. Whenever I think of someone who would be amazing in this business, you are one of the first people that comes to my mind. I think it's something you should take a look at, right? So direct is saying, I want you to look at this because I would like you to do this with me. That's a direct approach. If it's indirect approach to people that you know, you can say, you know what? This business may not be for you. It's no problem. I get it. But I would really love you to look at it because I know you would know people that you could connect me with. If it's not for you, fine, no problem. But if it's for you, wonderful. But if it's not for you, at least I know you can connect me with people. Okay, so that's indirect. And then super indirect means that, um, you know, you're dismissing them. These are people that might be, make a lot of money in their business, might be really big people, uh, might be people you don't feel on the same kind of social footing with. And those people, maybe you admire them, you're always going to compliment them. And those people, you're going to be um, saying something like, you know what, I know this, of course, my business wouldn't be for you. I mean, I know you're already so successful, but you're one of the people I admire most in the world. I know you know you are connected to so many people. And, and I, it would really mean the world to me if you would just look at this short video. It explains a bit more about what we're doing, because I know you would know people who would love to help people with their health or make a great income. And if you could connect me with those people, I would, I would really appreciate it. You know, I'm looking for entrepreneurial people who really want to make a difference, who really want to make a great income. I know it's not for you because you already are doing way too much. But if you know anyone entrepreneurial you could connect me with, oh my gosh, that would be amazing. Okay, that's super indirect. I know it's not for you, but if you can connect me. And then um, the last approach is a warm market, having a business conversation. Listen, have you ever had a business of your own before? Oh, wow. How did it go? Well, have you ever thought about a business of your own? Um, oh, um, you know, why not? Oh, it's too much capital, too much this, too much that. Then you can just tell them, you know, if, if I could show you a business that didn't have all those headaches, would you take a look at it? The question always comes down to if I would you. And this goes to our sharing the tools. Okay, so again, it's important that we, we, we use the tools, all right? We use the tools to share information. We don't try and talk so much. We're using the tools. And when we're using the tools, all right, once you've built a relationship, remember our main job is to build connections. Our main job is to build relationships. And our only job is to talk to people about what we have and teach them how to be successful in building their own business if they want to build a business. Remember, our job is not to make products. Our job is not to pay the commissions. That is Max International's job. Our job is to talk to people, share what we have, and if they're interested in the products or they want to be part of the business, connect them into the company through us. And that is how our business grows, right? As we are uh, buying the products ourselves every month, as everyone we connect into the company is also buying their products, then that is how your business grows. So now, as you are talking to people, you've built a relationship. I want to walk through the structure and then give you a few examples of how it could look. So the structure will always um, will always have these components in it. If I would you, it's always going to have an if I would you every single time. If I sent you a link that would give you an idea of what we're doing, would you look at it? Okay, so if I would you describe the resource and the time commitment. So if I sent you a link that would give you a bit more information about what we're doing, would you look at it? What you'll find on that link is two short videos. It will take you less than 10 minutes to review. Okay, so you tell them what you're sending them and how much time it will take them. Then you ask them when they will watch it. Okay, how soon will you, will you make time for that? And then I always book the next appointment. So the idea of booking a meeting from a meeting Okay, book a meeting from a meeting, bam, fam, book a meeting from a meeting. I try never to leave a conversation without booking our next appointment. 
I'm always trying to give the next thing that my potential business partner or customer is going to look at, and a next meeting time is already booked. In my follow-up message to them, I will also make sure that that follow-up time is noted in my message with whatever resource I'm sending them. So you want to make sure that they've given you the time, they will look at it, and then you book the time after that that they would have seen it. So what I do, for example, in my own calendar, I know that I'm going to block my call time, let's say between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m., okay? Five hours of prospecting calls and follow-ups. So, and I, I look at the next three, four, five days, and I have my calendar, depending on my schedule, when my call times are going to be. For me, I book them in 15-minute um, chunks or sometimes 30-minute chunks, depending on what kind of a call it's going to be. And I have my time slotted out. So I know when I'm talking to someone that what my windows of time are for the next three, four, five days. And when I ask them the question, I can go right into my calendar, I can book that, and then I confirm it with them. So for me, yes, you can ask them what's the best way to connect next. Um, but I usually, I will usually do a phone call because that's what I prefer. For me, I'm, I'm speaking to a lot of people that I don't know, so um, that I'm meeting on social media. So what I like to do is I want to build as much of a personal relationship as possible. So in the hierarchy of um, relationships, okay, in the hierarchy of messages and effectiveness, it starts with a face-to-face -face meeting, okay, in person live. That is the best, highest option you can have. The next would be a video meeting, okay, on Zoom or, or another video application, a video meeting. That would be the next best thing. Then the next best thing would be a voice conversation live, right? And the next best thing might be a video or voice message back and forth. And then the next best thing might be a personal message. And then the very worst thing is a group message, okay? So a group message in a WhatsApp chat group or just something you post on your social media, that would be the lowest form of relationship building and messaging. So for me, because I'm building new relationships on social media, I will always book a phone call or as we progress, it will be a video call so that we can get to know one another and really trust each other as well. So so now let's say I'm calling someone, I've met them on social media. I'll give a couple of examples, social media or someone that you know. Let's say I was calling someone that I know. Okay, how would I put this sharing the tool script together? So of course, after um, I greet them and share a few pleasantries. Now, if I haven't talked to them in a while, probably I would send them a, a text message. I'd send them um, a WhatsApp message or an SMS to say, you know what, listen, there's something that I, I want to talk to you about. When, when do you have a few minutes for us to talk live on the phone? And I would have a time so that they were expecting me rather than me just calling out of the blue. But I might call out of the blue. If I did call out of the blue, always, 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 I would ask them, do they have time to talk? Yeah, I wouldn't just call and expect that they're going to have 15 minutes for us to have a phone call. Okay, I would always want to ask them, do they have time to talk? Now, let's say it's somebody that I know and I'm going to use the direct approach. Okay, I might call them up and I might say, um, after we exchange a few pleasantries, right? How's everything going? How's the, how's the family? Oh, that's amazing. Then um, what I would usually do is I want to find out about their vision for their life, their dreams and goals, their vision for their life. So this is what I would typically do. I would say, you know, um, I remember we, we, we worked together. You were always um, amazing at this, whatever it was, or, you know, I, I know we've been friends for a long time and I've always really admired you in these ways. So I'd always give them a compliment. Okay. I'd give them a compliment if I knew them. And then I would ask them, you know, I was thinking about you the other day and, and I'm, I'm doing something pretty interesting these days. And I was just thinking about you. And I, I wondered, you know, what do you see as, as the plan for your future? 
what, what do you see as your vision? If you could really accomplish anything without any limits, what do you see as that, as that vision for your future? If you could do anything without any limits at all to what you could achieve, what you could impact, what would it look like for you? I'll ask them that. And usually they will tell me. Okay, so I'll ask them that question. And then I will share my own story. Okay, I will share a little bit of my own story. And especially, well, if I know them, I would share it differently than if I didn't know them. If, if I knew them, then I would say, you know, um, well, and I would also com comment on their vision. Wow, you know, that, that's amazing. I, I think that would be so fantastic. You know, maybe they want to help people. Maybe they want to create generational wealth, whatever they want to do for their lives. At least you have an idea of what they want to achieve. And now I would share a bit of my own story. So I might say something like, you know, for me, I knew I always wanted to do more. I was working in the corporate world. I didn't really know how I was going to impact more people and make a difference in the world until I was introduced to a company. And what they have is incredible. It's really a breakthrough in health. And I started working with the company part time and my life has never been the same. It's been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. Now, I might do a little bit more of the story, or I might not, but at some point, especially if they were my friend, I would say, you know, I was really thinking about you, because especially now that you've told me what you want to achieve in your life, you know, I really think that the business I'm doing with this company, it could be something you could look at as well, because there is nobody I'd rather work with than you in building this together, and I'm going to be doing big things this year. I think it's something you should look at. If I sent you a link that explained a bit more about what we're doing, would you look at it? And then we'll talk again. Or you could say, you know, the company's having a special presentation tonight, tomorrow night, whenever it is, Thursday night. If I invited you to, to come and check it out, would you, would you come as my guest? And then, you know, we can talk afterwards. Okay, so you can give them that kind of uh, option as well. Ah, it's great to see everyone here. I put everyone on mute for now so that we, uh, we don't have any feedback on the line. Beautiful. If you do have a, a question, okay, we're, we'll definitely take questions, comments, and you can, you can ask any questions that you have. You can also type it into the chat too. All right. So if you're watching live on Facebook, please come and join us on the Zoom so that we can interact with you. You can ask your questions. That will be fantastic. We are streaming live on Facebook on the Crown Diamond Global Impact page. But if you're watching there, uh, try and join us on Zoom if you can. Otherwise, we'll check out any questions after the fact. So if it's someone I don't know, all right, um, sometimes people have listened to my calls and they're like, well, yeah, you, you, you've already built a relationship, I can tell. No, I hadn't built a relationship. I literally met them on social media. And how I build a relationship is having a genuine interest in them, um, being very, very friendly, okay? That's why to me, a voice conversation is critical. For me, I find that voice to voice will work better for me because I don't know this person, they don't know me. And I want them to trust me. I want them to have a good feeling. And I also need a good feeling about them. If I'm going to go into business with them, I need to feel them. And I can't really feel them by a chat. They can't really feel me by a chat. I don't think that well. So I like to have a, a phone conversation. That's what I prefer as a first call. Um, I prefer if we can, as we progress, to move it up to a video call. But I don't really need a video call for my first call because that might be a little bit too much for a first call, but it's okay. Some people prefer the video call and then I will go ahead and do it. So if I'm talking to someone I don't know, okay, I've never met them. I've met them on social media. I've warmed up the conversation. I've let them know we're expanding in their area and that you know we're looking for um, entrepreneurial people who would love to make an impact. Would they be open to a short introduction call in the coming week? And then I give them the times that I'm available. So once they say, yes, they're open to a call and they give me their number, I connect up with them on WhatsApp um, so that we, I confirm, we start chatting on WhatsApp. Great, nice to meet you. Um, great to get your message on whatever the social media channel is. Now, um, 
let's let's book our time for Wednesday at 5 p.m. And by the way, if I'm working in another country, it will always be the time zone in their country. And I will always add the time zone in their country to my message so that they know that I know it is their time zone. Okay, because if we're working in someone else in, in another time zone, we need to be very mindful of, of the time zone. So once I get on the phone with someone I don't know that I've never met, firstly, I'm going to really appreciate them. Wow, thank you so much for accepting my, my invitation to connect. It's so great to, to be connected now and to be talking to you. And usually they'll say, wow, it's really nice to be talking to you now as well. So now all right away, we're friendly, we're, we're connected, right? We're, and then I ask them a little bit about them, you know, whereabouts do you live? Oh, fantastic. And what are you doing right now for your work? Right? And I will ask them that. I'll ask them a little bit. And then I will go to the question. What do you see as the vision for your life ahead? If you could achieve anything without any limits, then I will share my story. And then I will tell them that, you know, I'm looking for people who would really love to make an impact in the world, who love to help people with their health, and who would love to be making a great income so that they can achieve more of their dreams for their life. If I sent you a link that would give you an introduction to what it is we're doing, would you look at it? Then we can talk again. Okay, so that's exactly what I use every single time. Every single time. And... People will always look, okay? They will always look. Now you can use whatever tools you are comfortable with. If you know someone well and you're talking to them and you feel like they could come straight to a Zoom event, fantastic, invite them straight to a Zoom event. Remember that's a 40 minute commitment versus a 10 minute or 15 minute commitment. Sometimes with a brand new person, especially one that maybe you're meeting on social media, you can, you can gauge how the chat goes. And the thing is, you always just want to try. Try different, um, try different um, scenarios and see what works for you. So Paul is saying he likes the video on the first meeting, which is also good. You know, sometimes when you do a video call on your first meeting, you build that rapport and that trust right away when you're, when you're working from social media. So that's also perfectly great. People need to see you and feel you and know that you're a real person, that you're not going to scam them, that everything is very legitimate, right? So we'll hear from some of you after that are, that are prospecting successfully on social media um, to see how you normally do it. And obviously, I know that maybe um, each one of us has our own unique advantage, right? Maybe the fact that I'm Canadian, I'm in Africa might give me an advantage, an easier connection point than some others might have. But then some of you might be a pharmacist connecting with other pharmacists. Some of you might be a young person connecting with other young people. Um, some of you might be great at your Instagram, connecting with other great people who really like what you're doing, who think you're kind of cool and, you know, you have a great vibe. I don't have those things. So we each use whatever we have to our own advantage. Okay, so that's also really, really important. So that's on the prospecting side. Now, I want to talk about the closing because, um, or the follow-up, okay? The follow-up and the closing, because this actually is, is working very well as well, but sometimes it takes a little bit of um, effort and it's a little bit different than uh, maybe what some of us have been doing in the past. Now we've been learning this with our 90 day run accelerator program, but I've actually been doing it I, I, I've learned it a long time ago. I taught it a long time ago. And I have to be honest, I have not been doing it. So I've been doing it consistently. So for the past three weeks or so, um, since I've been back in Africa, I have been doing most days four to five hours of prospecting calls a day, prospecting and follow-up calls a day. Okay, that's booking it, booking appointments, doing first calls, second calls, third calls. Um, and so I've been using this closing approach every single time. And it's, it's really, really helping me. And let, let me walk you through it. Okay, this is exactly what Eric Worre teaches us. So of course, the question that we will always ask every single time, forever and a day that we have been asking for the last years and years and years, 
Once someone has seen something, what did you like best about what you've seen? Okay, what did you like best about what you, what you saw? What did you find most interesting? What did you like the most? Any question like that is always how you want to start. Always, always, always. Okay, and then from there, now what I have been doing, sometimes people have a lot of questions because what they have seen first is not enough. Let's say they've just seen the Max Science video and the Max Feeling Good video, for example. Um, that's what a lot of us are using. You can use that on gocmax.com. Um, for me, we've created a little video for our team, which is um, why would you want to join us? And we have a few of us speaking about what it feels like to be part of our community. So I add that one for people that I'm prospecting so that they can get a feel for us. But mostly what they're really seeing is that Max Science video, the science of ribocene, that four minute video. Okay, if you go to gocmax.com, what you'll see there is the feeling good video and the max science video. Those are perfect, great first short videos because you can tell someone it's going to take you less than 10 minutes to review. Okay, so for me, what I do, and this is exactly what we're showing here on the screen, the six question close is after I ask them what they like best, I will say to them, now, I, I know I'm sure you have a lot of questions and don't worry, we'll definitely answer all of those questions. But based on what you've seen so far and our conversations so far, where would you put yourself on a scale of one to 10? Where 10 is you're really interested in looking at this as a business and one, no, it's not for me at all. Sometimes I have to repeat the question a time or two in different ways. But that's basically the question. So then they will rate themselves. Could be a five, could be a seven, could be a, uh, today I talked to someone, he's basically a 10, right? I talked to someone earlier in the week. He was an eight earlier in the week. I gave him another assignment. And by the end of our call today, I told him this is not a fit for you. I, I could tell he'd moved down and it wasn't a fit for him. This is not a business for him. So I... For me, I'm looking for decisions, yes or no. I'm just as happy when I get a no. I'm just as happy when I can make it a no as I am with a yes, because it removes them from my list. And I can focus on moving forward with people who are ready to move forward. So I ask them where they are on a scale of one to 10. And then I will ask them, okay, perfect. Now let's assume that you were starting a part-time business with us. You are going to build a part-time business with us. How much would you need to make on a monthly basis, let's say in US dollars, to make it worth your time? And a lot of times they, they will have questions about that. Well, you know, that would depend. I don't really, I don't really know. I don't really understand. And I'll just keep going at it. Yeah, don't worry, I understand. You you still are not quite sure how it all works. But let's say you were starting a part-time business and you were going to put some effort into it. How much income would you need to be making on a monthly basis, let's say in US dollars, to make it worth your time, to make it worth your attention, to make it worth you putting some time into? What would you need to be making on a monthly basis? And as I ask it a time or two, usually they will come up with a figure, $300, $200, $1,000, $5,000, whatever figure they come up with, I say, okay, good, fine. Now, if they come up with a big, big figure, then sometimes I will dive into a little bit about what they might be making now, okay? Or what somebody in their position with their experience is would be making in their country, approximately. Because I want to get an idea what they would be making because if they're saying something crazy and they're making you know a fraction of that and they studied for 10 years to get there or they worked for 10 years to get there, then I, I have it in my mind. Because the next question is going to be fantastic. So you want to make 500 to $1,000 a month, beautiful. So how many hours per week or how many hours per day or per week would you be willing to put in to your part-time business in order to get your income of $500 to $1,000 in a month? How many hours per day or per week would you be willing to put in to make that kind of money? And then they will give an answer. Could be anything from an hour a day to 30 minutes a day to eight hours a day. 
just whatever they answer. And then you can ask them, this is where I find practically that some people get a bit stuck. I will ask them, how long would you be willing to commit to building your part-time business, working at that pace to earn your income of $500 to $1,000 a month? How many months would you be willing to commit to build your business up to that level? Sometimes I have to ask it a time or two in different ways. And sometimes they might say a month or two months. Sometimes they might say as long as it takes. Sometimes they might give a very short time. And, or sometimes they might be really stuck and they can't really give an answer. So what I will say to them is, you know, especially if they've given me an amount and I know that it's equal or maybe more than what they're already making in their full-time job that has taken them X years of study and practice to earn. So I will say to them, you know, um, you want to be making $1,000 a month, which is, which is, you know, equal to or more than what you're currently making. And it took you, you know, six years to get to this point. So usually what I like to let people know is that when they're committing to a business that you want to really commit, you don't want to just say, well, let me give it a month. If I'm not making all the money, I'll leave. You want to know that you're coming in, you're committing, you're going to commit for, you know, at least a good year and that you're going to be learning and growing and you're going to be seeing progress along the way, but definitely you're going to commit. And it might not be that in a month or two months, you might be making all that money, but you're going to be seeing progress. Does that seem fair enough? And they will say yes. Okay, so by now I've sort of set the, the framework and the example. I've written down all of their answers, by the way, because after our conversation, I am going to summarize what they have given me and I am going to give it back to them. I have a little template all written out already and I've given it back to them. So then I will ask them, okay, you notice on this question number six, if I would you, okay? Then I will ask them, if I could show you how to build a part-time business, earning between $500 and $1,000 per month, working 15 to 25 hours in, in, in a week, okay, let's say that's what they've given me, um, in the space of six months to a year, would you be ready to get started? Okay, so if I could show you exactly what they've asked for and exactly what we have reasonably negotiated, if I could show you how to do that, would you be ready to get started? And in many cases, the answer is yes. Okay, so then what I say to them is this, and this is really important. This is the part I've really been enjoying. At some point, remember, they still have questions, okay? So what I will say to them now is good. Let me tell you then how we would work together. And then I will answer your questions before I tell you how you can get started. So I tell them how we're going to work together. And if you look at this section on the crucial conversation, okay, this last section here, this, this is what I do in the closing. I don't wait till they've started. So I say, let me tell you how we're going to work together. We have a lot of training, resources, and support to make sure you can be successful in your business. Absolutely, we've got a ton. But I am going to work with you personally to guide you every step of the way. As long as I know that you are willing, coachable, and hungry for success. Now, based on our conversation so far and what I know about you, I think you have those qualities. Am I right? I will always ask that. And they will always say, yes, you're right. And, and I believe that they are because we've gone to this stage and I believe that they have those qualities. So I'll say, good, I think you also have those qualities. So here's how I'm going to know that you are willing, coachable and hungry. As we get started working in your business, I'm going to be giving you assignments. We're going to discuss them. You're going to agree and then we're going to agree on a timeline and I'm going to expect that you are going to come back to me to say, okay, Anne, I'm done, what's next? I'm done, what's next? I'm done, what's next? And if you have a problem, maybe you need more time, maybe you're struggling with something, you don't understand something, you want to discuss it, no problem at all. You just come back to me and let me know 
that you need a bit more time or you'd like to discuss this, you don't really quite understand it or the calls aren't going well, whatever it is, no problem at all. But if you take the assignments and you never come back to me, then eventually I'm going to have to really kind of think that maybe you're not quite ready for a business and I shouldn't be spending my personal time with you. If, if whenever you're ready, I'll be ready. But if you're not yet ready, then I need to leave you to the group resources and training. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it makes sense. Fantastic. Good. Now, what questions can I answer for you before I tell you how to get started? Okay, so I will answer their questions. Sometimes that will result in another assignment. If they want to understand the business plan better, they want to understand some things, I might give them a short answer, but give them a longer assignment. I'm always looking in my head based on our conversation, what assignment do they need to take them forward? Then I will tell them how to get started. To get started will cost you X, Y, Z, all right, as, as a minimum, depending on the products that you want. Now, are you in a position to get started now? Can you make your, pro your product payment now and get started? And if the answer is, um, sometimes I ask it this way. I say, how soon would you be ready to get started? Okay, I might ask it that way. And they will say end of the month or two months time or next month. If they don't, if they don't say right now, or I can, I can pay tomorrow or the next day or two days time, then I will always ask them this. Is it the money alone that would stop you from starting right now or is it something else? If it's something else, or if it's the money alone, then I will give them the hot market assignment, okay? And I will usually have them watch something more as well. So depending on who they are, if they are um, not medical, I will definitely want them to watch the product presentation and the business presentation, meaning our, our global Zoom or a recorded version of that. So that's what I will give them as one of the assignments. And the other assignment will be to write down their 20 closest family, friends, and supporters. Do not talk to them yet. Do not talk to them. Write them down. Their 20 closest family, friends, and supporters. And I have that written out as a template as well. And then um, I will ask them when they could get that done by. And that's what we set as our assignment. So I'm documenting the assignments. They're going to watch something else and they're going to write down their 20 closest family, friends, and supporters. In, in, in my head, I'm calling that a hot market uh, list, okay? And then the next assignment will be, once they come back to me saying it's done, the next assignment will be to teach them what to say and have them go to their hot market and asking for that support, okay? I have someone who's working on that right now. She already has someone who is paying for um, a third of what she needs to get started. She has someone else who's committed. She's, she's going really well. So by, by that way, people are going to be paying for the products. They can use that money to get them started in the business, and it works very, very well. And that was um, Ezekiel's idea, Ezekiel Ulibor from Lagos. He, after he heard about the hot market assignment in the 90-day run, he started using it with his uh, raising money to register people, and it's working very well. So I've started that as well, and I, I really, really like it. Okay, so... And then you just continue from there. But one of the things that I really, really like is the assignment based. So every single thing I'm doing now is assignment based because that is going to tell me who I need to spend time with. If I give them an assignment and they come back, I'm ready for the next one, ready for the next one. If I keep giving them assignments, I don't hear from them. You know, too many of us have spent a lot of time chasing people in this business. Now, we don't want to just ignore them because maybe they have, um, maybe, you know, something came up or maybe the assignment was too difficult. They just don't, they, they got overwhelmed. So just give them an easier assignment, okay? A baby assignment, a simple assignment, like watch this one video and come back to me when you're done. That's a simple assignment that anyone can do, right? Talking to their 20 family friends and, and, and hot market might be intimidating for them. But if they're hungry enough, they will do it, especially if you've had the conversation with them explaining how you're going to work together. Okay, so I'm going to pause there for a moment. I'm going to um, take any questions if, any has them, if anyone has them. And then I was, I was really so impressed by um, Albert Owusu today 
who posted something about um, a simple a simple process to follow for social media prospecting. And uh, in a moment, I'm going to have him share his tool. We've created a, a, a generic tool that he he created. And so I'll post that into the Facebook group afterwards, the Crown Diamond Global Facebook group, but I want him to walk us through it as well. So if you have a question, just type into the chat that you have a question into the Zoom chat. I see that some of you have your hands raised, but I don't know if that's because you have a question. Um, if you do you have a question or are you just raising your hand? So I'll unmute you if you have a question. And uh, Matashola, do you have a question as well? Or are you just, uh... okay, you've lowered your hand. So Ify, I don't know if you have a question or if you just raised your hand by mistake. Okay, does anyone have any questions about, about that or any comments? Any comments, any questions about what we've shared so far? Okay, if you've got any questions or comments, you can definitely ask them. And then I want, um, let me stop the sharing for a moment. And let me uh, bring up Albert Owusu. Okay, and I, I want you to share the tool that you've created and um, a little bit about your experience, what had you create the tool, because I love it. It's amazing. Right. So thank go you, ahead. Thank, thank you so much, Anne. Uh, yeah. Anna has been a big inspiration to me and my entire team. I remember meeting Anne, I think three years ago, and she told me about the vision of Max. And I mean, she, what she whatever she said has come to pass. So Anne, thank you so much for the opportunity. And I'm about to share with you my tool and why I actually made this tool, right? So first of all, I'm just gonna share. If you can see my screen, please let me know you can see my screen. Yes, can you see we my can. Screen? Okay, perfect. So in my process of actually, you know, using social media, right, which has become the main thing now in network marketing, right? Because for those who are an accelerator, you understand that social media is what is going to take us to the world. There are millions of people out there who need our opportunity, but then how then can you present yourself to them? The easiest way now is through social media. So in building with my team, getting to know them, getting to understand people, I understood that most of us actually like simple systems and we like structure. So this is actually just supposed to help you take away that worrying, you know, thoughts of what should I do next? What steps should I do next? And, you know, it gets you confused. And when you're confused, you don't actually, you know, take effective action, right? So this is supposed to help you have clarity of thoughts so that whenever you start your process of prospecting you actually flow because once you flow i mean the the, the 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 business gets even sweeter right so what i'm going to discuss with you first of all is the system here and it's just going to be quick right because it's just a four-step process right so what is here using social media has made this process even simpler there are millions of people that need what we have at max follow this process to show them what we have and guide them to make a decision now and the first process is find ad message. Now, in find ad message, you notice on social media, there are different people from different walks of life. But what you're looking for is your tribe, people that you connect with. Like Anne said, you might be somebody who connects with young people. You might be a mother that connects to other mothers. You might be a banker, a pharmacist that will connect to other pharmacists. So everybody has the advantage. But in doing that, you need to find where your interest groups are. So in people, you find... You know, people, for example, when I say people, I mean people that you would, you know, you feel they have your ideal prospect in their circle. So it could be a friend, a celebrity, it could be an influencer, right? And they have a group of people that you think have a similar vibe to you, right? So you, what you do is that you follow those people, you add them as friends on Facebook or Instagram, and make sure that you are always in their comment section, connecting and joining in the conversation that is going on in their comment section, right? So you find people in that category. Now in places, there are certainly places you want to visit as an associate, right? There are dream locations or even places you want to build business. Once you have that list of places, right? You can always make sure that when you go into a search engine, you use hashtags like Kenya, hashtag Cameroon, hashtag, um, you know, wherever it is you want to build your business, right? It will take you to people who have actually posted with those hashtags, or you could actually search those locations. And Instagram has something we call the geotag to take you to people who have posted in that specific location. 
So then you can, this is what I did when I was about to go to Zanzibar, right? I noticed that I was going to Pakayat. So I typed in Pakayat in the search engine. Now, when I typed search uh, Pakayat, it took me to locations. There's, a, there's a, a column called location, click on it. It showed me all the people who had visited Pakayat and those who have visited recently. Now, this is what I did. I texted one lady, I was like, hey, um, she was actually Nigerian. I think she was called Choma, right? And I texted, I was like, hey, Choma, I just noticed that you recently visited Pakayat. I'm actually about to visit there soon. How was your experience? Just started a whole conversation and now we are more like best friends now, right? So you can connect with people like that, right? Passions, the different things you're passionate about, you can search for that and you find them. And products, maybe you're somebody who loves iPhones, you love, uh, you know, love clothes, you love flowers, whatever it is that you love and you want to buy, you can definitely find pages that sell those things or pages that talk more about the things you like. And then the people in the comment section or people who follow them are definitely people who you might have a connecting ground with. So these are connecting grounds you can build with. Now, number two is build rapport. Now in building rapport, it's simple, right? You want to make sure you're interested in people. Now, how then do you go without being very creepy? Location, occupation, recreation, and dreams. For example, you have a conversation with somebody. Hey, I just noticed you just followed me on Instagram. I love your page. You're doing amazing here. I just want to find out, where are you located? The person just told you, I'm located in um, Cape Town. Oh, wow, I love Cape Town. I've already had... So you can have a whole conversation about location. Gavin talk about all the things that have to do with the location, the history of the location. The person will feel like, oh, I kind of know this person because we are kind of having a good conversation going, right? Then you can go to occupation. Occupation could be... So I'm just curious, what, it is, what, what is it that you do? Are you a student? Are you working? Where do you work? You can have a whole conversation about occupation. You can talk about your history of where you worked before, share experience. It goes on and on from there. Recreation. For me, as a guy, I'm a Manchester United fan. I know most of you here might be laughing at me because my team is not doing so well now, but that's fine. So recreation. I could just look for people who are Manchester United fans, right? And we, in conversation, I could just say, hey, so what team do you support? Or what do you like to do on the weekend? Some guys will say, you know what, I like to watch football. I'm like, oh, so what team do you support? We have a whole conversation about that. And dreams. Now, this is a keyword I'll give you now, right? I have limited time, so I'm going to give you a keyword here. In talking about dreams, sometimes it's a bit creepy to ask people about what is this, what's their ultimate vision? So you know what you do? You state this statement. You make the statement. You know what, Chioma? I'm a big dreamer. So in my conversation with anybody, I like to talk about dreams. So I'm guilty of talking about dreams. So what is your ultimate dream? The person knows that you've actually accepted your, you know, very awkward flaw or something like that. I mean, so you let the person know that this is how you are. You love to talk about dreams. You're a big dreamer. So they will be more willing to talk to you because they know you've already stated that and that can have a good conversation. So after having this line of conversation with people, they will feel it could happen within 24 hours. All this could happen within 24 hours. And at the end of 24 hours, they will feel like they really know you. Right, and they feel like they can really trust you based on the conversation and the extent of topics you've discussed. Now, ask the question. This is as simple as ABC. Asking the question is simply ask a question. Hey, Choma. Hey, Anne. Hey, Jody. Hey, Pam. Would you be open to checking out some info on a project I'm working on? It could be for you or not for you. I mean, Anne will definitely give you a script. I'm sure she has certain scripts, but this is what I use, right? Hey, just curious, would you be open to checking out some info on a project I'm working on? It could be for you or not for you. That means I'm taking it away from you. I'm not forcing it down your throat. Maybe it could be for you or not. Would you be open? Sure, what's that about? Then you move into the next level, which is number four, share two. So rather than going to explain so much, which I know a lot of us are guilty of, you want to let the person feel like you are the, the, the house of knowledge when it comes to your company. It's not necessary. What you want to do is you want to keep it simple so that the person, one thing I noticed and learned from Eric Worry was that in your prospecting process, what you are doing is you are training your new sign up. Whatever it is you are doing in your prospecting process, you are training the new person to understand that, okay, this is how you got me in. So that means this is what I have to do to what get people into. So keep it simple. So the person understands now that, oh, I got in with a simple process. That means to get people in, it's a simple process too. So you ask the question and then you share too. We have videos like Anne said, um, you know, she has a um, team too that talks about what they have gained from Max or what their community is all about. 
there are videos like you know the new video um are you ready? I've forgotten the name of the video, but I know the video you're talking about, right? And there are other videos you could check out. Every team has a tool that works for them, but definitely there are certain tools that are general. Um, Chris and Tommy have a link, which is max, maxlook.info, maxlook.info. You can send that link and tell the person to check out those vi the videos there. They are very good videos that could get the person to understand what it's about. Then after, maybe you could get a person to join a webinar, right? to see the full details of what we're working on. And it could even be a webinar that you didn't even organize. We always have webinars happening, right? And you could just, just involve yourself with your prospects. So you take the stress and the load off yourself and then you let the tools do the work. Now, the last thing you need to do is what? Guide the prospect to make a decision. And this is what Anne did fantastic with. She shared with you the simple questions you could ask to do that. So I want you to learn those questions and learn it and practice it because you're not learning just for yourself. You're going to have a team in the future. Learning how to close is not for you now. It's for your team in the future. So currently you might have a leader who's closing for you. That's fantastic. But learn it, practice it. There might be days that your leader might not be around, you learn it, right? So by use of third party calls, you add credibility to this process. Guide the process, prospect to make a decision and you are good to go. So this is my four step process to getting people to actually understand the process of doing the max business without having too much going on in your mind. So thank you so much, Anne. I'm so, 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 so grateful for this opportunity and thank you so much. Albert, you are a superstar. Oh my gosh, let's show Albert some love. Let's give him some, some hearts in the chat. Let's give him some love in the chat. That was really, really amazing. I absolutely love this tool. I love how simple you've made it. I'm definitely sharing it with people and I'm going to be putting it into the Crown Diamond Facebook page. So that was really, really awesome. Congratulations. And, and you're right. We just need to make it super simple. It's perfectly awesome. Um, we have time for one quick, one or two quick questions. So if anyone else uh, has a question, you can, you can ask it. But Ezekiel was asking a question, which was a good one. He said, if someone on your chicken list decides to get started, seeing these are people you respect a lot, how will the crucial conversation go? Okay, how will the crucial conversation go? So in other words, if, if let's say a real top you know, person that you really respect. Um, so yeah, so Ezekiel, are you on this call? Let's see, I wanna... I want to see what you would answer because usually we have our, our answers. Okay, I think he's on Facebook. So does anyone have something that they would wish to um, give as an idea for how you would handle the crucial conversation um, from someone who's on your chicken list? If anyone has that idea, they can mention it. So one thing that is always good to do, let's say you are um, more junior to the person, right? And the person is someone really senior that you really respect and admire. Um, one thing I would really encourage you to do is to introduce your um, chicken list person, okay, who's decided to get started. You could actually do it um, during the closing or afterwards to your upline. Okay, to someone who they might view as being on their own level, all right, which that upline, their job is now to edify you. Okay, so now they're going to edify the heck out of you. And the other thing that you want to do is use the team's credibility. Okay, use the team's experience. So my recommendation would be that you, you would say, you know what? Wow, you have achieved so much in business. Oh my goodness, I can learn a ton from you. I, I'm, I'm excited. I know we'll have a lot of um, good ideas to exchange. But um, you know, there are some things that we have found really work in this business. They're trained by uh, million dollar earners in this business, by top people in our company as well. And so the way that we work in, in our business is you know we have certain processes that really really work and how we work together is we work based on assignments so you know it's what i like to do by the way 
when someone has made a decision to start, um, I will have a business launch meeting with them. Okay. And what I want to know is how fast or how slow do they want to go? Now, remember that already um, I know that they are going, they, they want to put X number of hours a day or week into their business. They want to make this amount of money and they want to see it happen in this amount of time. So I ask them, I remind them of that and I ask them, has anything changed or is that still valid as of today? And then um, we discuss how fast or how slow they want to go. So for example, someone I started off um, this past week, she wants to go slow because she's got a few things on the go. So we're not going to go crazy right now, but the assignment I gave her was to start on her products and report her results in a product tracking sheet. That was the assignment because she has some other things on her plate right now, um, and that's fine. And then, you know, so, so the assignments are going to depend on where the person is as well. So, and it also depends on how fast they absorb. You're, you're going to know you have a runner if they're taking the assignments and they're running with them and they're, they're looking for more information, right? Think about the best people you've seen in the business or the best people you have in your team. They're people that don't wait for you to guide them. They're people that take what you give them and they go looking for more. Like, look at what Albert just created with that tool. He wasn't waiting for the Crown Diamond Accelerator Group to put it together. He created it and he shared it and it's flipping amazing, right? So you're going to know the people that want to run. So if it was my chicken list um, person, you know, I, I think I would just have a launch conversation and maybe have your um, more senior-ish upline in that conversation with you so that they feel there's someone there who might be at their level, who can edify you, and who can also help um, guide the conversation. But that person is, is a big person. And so you're going to want to know what they want to achieve. You know, how do you see this business? What is your goal? Do you want to just impact people? Do you want to make a lot of money? Do you want to empower people who need it? What is it that you would like to achieve? You know, so that then you can figure out the best way to help them achieve it. That's really what I would what I would recommend. All right. So this was amazing. It is one hour on the dot. Uh, Albert, thank you, thank you, thank you for your most beautiful um, training. Thank you for the tool. It was incredible. If you've already made it um, generic, then just go ahead and put it in the Crown Diamond page, if you can, the Facebook page. We'll really, we'll really appreciate it. That's amazing. And we appreciate you so much. It was great training. Albert is going to be one of our um, host speakers on... Um, on the Saturday night uh, global BOM. So you've heard him, he's amazing. You can get your prospects in front of him and they will love it, all right? We have a great lineup this week. Um, we'll put out the posters very soon. All right, thank you everybody. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll be talking to you very soon. Yes, the, well, it's in Facebook, Tope, so it's right there. Okay, so you've got it on the Crown Diamond Global Facebook page, no problem at all. And probably we'll put it into our Crown Diamond YouTube uh, training page as well, so that the video will just be there on its own. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have an amazing, fantastic night.